So hello, everyone. And I'm glad that uh, you all made it. Um, and um, so we're going to get started. All right. Did, uh, last week, we studied the bait, the, the, bet, the bait, and bet a sheet. And this time, we're going to go back to the very first letter, which is the Aleph. Mm -hmm. Aleph means oneness. Okay. So that's why it's all, um, oneness or Aleph. Okay. So let's get started by starting with a prayer for studying the word. Uh, if you'll join me. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kitchano Bimitzvota Bitsivanu Al Divre Torah. Blessed are you, Lord our God, everlasting King who sets us apart by his establishments and, is, and established us on words of Torah and make the words of your Torah, Lord our God, pleasant, sweet in our mouth. Kulanu yore shmecha leyomde Torah ha nishma that we would all be knowers of your name and students of your Torah for its own sake. Amen. All right, so we're studying the olive this week. The word, the word was created with the olive bet. We see in Kabbalah. We can't see that. You can't. Oh, I'm going to share my screen. I'm no. sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Just a second. Huh? You get all the tab? No. What? There you go. Now we're sharing it? Yeah. I'm going to go to the uh, to Zoom. There it is. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Just a second. I thought I had, <laughs> I thought I had done it. There we go. Okay, I am so sorry. <coughs> All right, so I'm going to go back since you guys didn't get to see it with me. So here we are at the first page and um, we're studying the Aleph which means oneness, okay? Let's do the prayer now. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav v'tivanu al divrei Torah. Blessed are you, Lord our God, everlasting King, who sets us apart by his establishments and established us on words of Torah. And make the words of your Torah, Lord our God, pleasant, sweet. No. Kulanu yore shmecha, leyom de Torah ha vishma. That we would all be knowers of your name and students of your Torah for its own sake. Okay. So, what we're studying is the Aleph. The word, the world, excuse me, was created with the olive bet. The olive means to learn knowledge. Aleph bina. That's where the word uh, olive bet comes from. Each letter has a meaning, a numerical value, and a spiritual significance and power according to Kabbalah, according to, to the sages. There's power in each letter. That's why I put down Proverbs 21-23. One who guards his mouth and his tongue guards his soul from, from troubles. We guard our mouth by the words we say. We think about what we're going to say because we're using the alphabet. Okay. Obviously, we're using the English alphabet, but it's the same principle. You got you to gotta think about what you're saying. There's power in the word. You know, I think about, you know, the, wor the world was created with words. 
just words. That's all that it took to create this world. Okay, in myjewishlearning.com online, the article about the Hebrew al um, or alphabet states, in Hasidim, according to the Hasidic teachings, the biblical craftsperson, craft person's name, Etzalel, means in the shadow of God. For to shadow means to emulate. You're shadowing a person, you're following along after them, you're emulating them, you're copying them. Thus did Betzalel, through the knowledge of the power of the letters and their permutations, in other words, the different combinations of how you put the letters in, in what order you put them, in what combination you put them, we're emulating God in the act of creation. It is thought that the Hebrew letters <laughs> are building blocks for life. Um, by the word of God were the heavens made. Psalm 33, 6. So the next word that we're going to look at is so fair. And a sofer or so fair is a, is a scribe. And he's the one that writes the Torah. So that's why I have that picture of a scribe. And they're so meticulous. The Hebrew letters are so important that they um, that the scribe has to practice the shape of each letter and placement before he can work on an actual Torah scroll. Also, the article cited above goes on to say, this religious dictum itself can be seen to impart a higher lesson. Each person, like each letter in the Torah, has a unique purpose in the divine plan. No one may impinge on another's particular mission in life, just as no two letters may overlap. Each letter has a mission or gift, just like, an in, like each individual person. So just like we need to respect each other and respect our our uh, position, our authority, our um, what we're supposed to be doing in life, that's how important it is to respect each letter because each letter has an important mission. Like last week, we learned about the bait and the house and being in the house and how how you know magnificent it was that God allowed it to be the first letter in the Torah because it uh, because the word blessing also begins with a bait. So it was given that honor. So we have to think about that the, the sofer has to practice each letter diligently until he gets it just right and it's exact and it's passed down onto the, the, the Torah scroll that he's writing so that the Torah <laughs> that you're looking at now, the Torah scrolls that you look at now are exactly like the Torah scrolls from the past. The letters are that precise. Okay, so uh, I'm so sorry, guys. My nose is stuffed. So when we were in Israel and we went to um, Masada, it was so amazing because we went up, you know, to the top of Masada, Michael and I, and there was like a synagogue up there, basically. I mean, it wasn't in use, but it was set up, you know, kind of like a, a circular uh, um, synagogue and where everybody could see each other's faces. And it was amazing because off to the side was a little room and there was a sofa there and he was practicing the letters. It was so neat because we got to see him actually, he was, he was actually writing on a scroll. So, you know, it was just so cool. We got to at least experience, you know, the diligence of practicing each letter. The Alephet. So um, what I think I'm going to do, because I didn't get to do it last week, what I think I'm going to do is send you all, oops, I'm sorry, send you um, my uh, PowerPoint 
so that you guys can look at them because we have not been able to get them up on the Levcion website. But I put this um, olive bed chart so that you can see each letter and you can see how you pronounce that particular letter and what it sounds like and the numerical value. And we go from right to left, and you can see the Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey, Bob, Zion. Anyway, so you're seeing all the letters, and you're seeing the pronunciations. And like you can see the Aleph, the very first one, we see Aleph, and then it's silent. Okay? Because remember, it was like a breath last week. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We're going to teach you that this week. The Aleph is like a breath. Okay? And it has a numerical value of one, the oneness. Okay? So I'll send you this um, this PowerPoint, and then you'll have this chart. Okay. The olive, the Hebrew letters are so important, like I said, that a scribe must practice the shape of each letter and placement before he can work on it for a scroll. Also, the article goes on to say, the religious dictum itself can be seen to impart a higher lesson. Each person, like each letter in the Torah, has has a unique purpose or divine plan. No one may impinge on another's particular mission in life, just as no two letters are the same. So I really want you to see that even though some of the letters look similar, they're not. They're all so different. They're unique. They each have a different meaning. They each have a different sound. And that's how we are. We're all individual. We're all, you know, we all have something special <laughs> about us. Okay. The Aleph. The first letter of the Aleph bet and has the value of one. Its value is one, and it's no surprise that it signifies oneness, but it also signifies unity of the creator. The Aleph has no sound. Okay. It's just, it's like breath. It has no sound. And what it makes me think of is, it's like the spirit of God. It's just like it's breath. And yet you know it's there. You don't hear it. You don't see it. But you know it's there. It's the, like the spirit, like the ruach. The creator is in everything. And is the source of everything in existence. The Kedushat Nevi, uh, Genesis Bereshit says, this means that God is part of every creature he ever created. And once a man realizes that he is nothing more, ah, sorry, he is nothing more, nothing without God who created him and who provides him with, I'm sorry, I don't know why this is doing it. I don't know. Okay, this means that God is part of every creature he cre ever created. And once man realizes he is nothing without God who has created him and who provides him with all the strength and creative stimuli that he possesses, he will be able to relate to Hashem as an ongoing creative force in his universe. So I read that and I just got so excited because it's like, Everything is created by God. Um, when we study, and I know some of you have studied this, like um, the, the spark, there's a spark of God in everything. When God created, it was like the spark of life that came into each and every one of us, each and everything. So you get a spark from another person. You get something godly from that other person. You can see a tree and get some kinds the the tree can speak to you um something godly you can look at a rock and the rock can speak to you it makes me think of that scripture that's a, uh, in the new testament where it says you know it if we don't speak the rocks would speak and and what i'm saying is it's like there's this power there's this spark in everything that god created because god made it so it's like part of him is the essence of God is in everything that's created in this, in this world. 
the olive, now I put circles here around uh, the yod, the top and the yod at the bottom. Okay. The olive represents the openness of God. The olive is formed by two yods or yods, okay, hand, and a bob, which is the diagonal, okay, which is that diagonal that we see there. The top yod represents a higher or heavenly world and the hidden and ineffable or undescribable aspects of God. The lower yod, the bottom, the bottom yod, represents God's revelation and presence in the world. It is representative of the air. There we are again, the air, the spirit, and of God. The olive is silent like air or the ruach. The spirit. The Vav unites the upper and the lower <laughs> Yud. It looks, the Vav acts and looks like a hook. It's a connection or a unity between the, the spiritual and the physical. So we, we look at that and we're going, it's like God in the heavens is connected, is hooked in to the lower yod, which is us on earth, acting out what God has us act out, act, acting out the festivals, acting out Shabbat, acting out kosher foods. Okay, and when we're doing this, we're getting to we're getting to be connected through this bob, this hook, because the bob is is a connector. Okay, it's always a connector, whether it's in a letter or it's in. Um, a sentence and it's it's the vav is means and okay so it's a connector so here it's connecting the heavenly heavenly world but it's also connecting the the earth and we come together with this vav. I mean, look at the bottom yod. Uh huh. The bottom yod. My mama used to always say that this whole world is upside down and back. Oh, okay. Look at it. Michael, down. Michael saying, look at the bottom yod. And it, it made him think of his mom always saying, this world is upside down and backwards because that yod is like upside down and backwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, that's good. All right. So the olive represents God and air. The first time in the scriptures that we see the word, which begins with the olive, is the word Elohim. So we see the first sentence is Bereshit. I wrote it there for you. Bereshit. And it goes from right to left. Bereshit bara Elohim. So you see there's the very first olive that starts a word in the scriptures. We read, in the beginning, God. Elohim is introduced to us with the first letter of the olive bed. God in his humility allowed Beit to go first in the written Torah. Because of this great act, Aleph was given the honor to start the Ten Words, or what some people know, know as the Ten Commandments. The Aleph is the first letter in the three words for God's name. I am who I am. Yehyeh, Asher, Yehyeh. Ah, I, I misspelled it, sorry. Yehyeh, Asher, Yehyeh. There's no J, guys. Sorry. <laughs> and there it is in Hebrew. Echyeh, Asher, Echyeh. Okay. Right. So, the olive represents a pure creation that is something created entirely from nothing. I see that entirely contrary to the Big Bang Theory, where something existed and it exploded and all of a sudden we've got the world and human beings and everything, right? So I see that entirely contrary. This, the word Aleph represents a pure creation where there's nothing, nothing. It states that, um, which states it simplified that there was a big bang and it came into being. Something existed and seemingly exploded. And as a result, things were created like the earth. The olive is different from that theory. 
it creates something from nothing. And therefore, we as human beings are not able to fully comprehend that kind of creation. Um, I remember there was a story I used to read to the kids when they were little, and it was something from nothing. And basically, it was like this tailor grandpa the tailor was making something for the kids out of nothing it is a creation that that there's nothing at all it's not putting two things together like a building when we have a building we go out and we buy lumber we buy nails this kind of creation that from the olive is totally different it's like, like i said i can't comprehend it so i probably can't explain it well Something from nothing. That's the only thing I can say. Something from nothing. So I'm sure, you know, you'll have questions about it because I have questions about it. Okay. But that's what the Aleph is. The numerical value for the Aleph is equal to one. But when we add the two Yod, the upper and the lower Yod, and the Vav, which unites the Yod, which connects the Yod. The Vav equals 6. We add 10 plus 10 plus 6, and it equals 26. And this is amazing because 26 is also the numerical value in the Gematria of the divine name yod Hey vav Hey Yehovah, okay? So the Yod is equal to 10. The He is equal to 5. And you can go back to your chart, okay? And the, when I send you the, the PowerPoint, the Yod is equal to 10. The He is equal to 5. The Vav is equal to 6. And then there's a second He, and that's equal to 5. So we add 10 plus 5 plus 6 plus 5, and that equals 26. So the Aleph equals 26, just if you break it down with the Yod above and the Yod below and the Vav, but yod he vav he equals 26. So we see the elevation of the shape of the Aleph. I mean, that's how great it is. The Aleph is representative of God, and we can see that it has the same numerical value, the Gematria, as yod he vav he Isn't that cool? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I think that is so cool. God is the olive. Yes, God is the olive. Okay. So the Yod um, equals the world to come and completeness. It is it also symbolizes wisdom and is illustrated by it being small. The Yod is also seen as a hand. The word hand in Hebrew is yod, okay? So it's also seen as a hand because the word for in Hebrew for hand is yod. Since the yod is so small, it also re represents the supernatural, the things that are above and the physical, above the physical dimension, in according to Hebrew today. The yod is also seen as a hand because the word of the word in Hebrew for hand is yod. See the Yod above the Bob as a picture of God's hand or wisdom reaching down to us on earth. So that's why the pictures that I have here, you see the hand, then you see the Torah, and then you're seeing <laughs> the Aleph. Okay. So it's like God's hand, you know, is reaching down. God's hand reaches down for us. And then there's the Bob. That is the connector, the connector, or the, the one that joins the hand above and the hand below. And if you can kind of picture it like, you know, God reaching down for us and us through our through our Judaism, through our acts, it reaching up to God so that we come together, we connect. And, it, you know, it also makes me think of um, when we see a star of David. I know some of you have seen this or been told this. The Star of David is one triangle going up and one triangle going down. Okay. And they intersect. Well, 
in a lot of Jewish uh, commentary, you'll see that one of the, 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 the triangle that is pointing up is us reaching up to God. Whereas the triangle that is facing down is God reaching down to man. And they're coming together because it's like both, both God is reaching for us and we should be reaching for him. And that is the essence of Judaism. And that is kind of what we're seeing with the Aleph, that it's, it's God reaching and there's this Bob connecting the two. Yod also means Jude. I mean, Jew. <laughs> so like when we say um, Yud, he's a, he's a Jew. He's a Yud. Mm. Yud. Okay. So Yod also means Jew or Yud means Jew or hand of God. Okay. And uh, somebody's blocking me. I can't see the top of the thing. Anyway. Uh, so we get the word. We get the word. Uh, what happened? Did it? I can't see it. I'm going to go back one. Wait up. No, it doesn't go away. How do I make this go? I'm sorry. Just a second. How do I make this go away? Oh, can I? Maybe. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. That's okay. There's gotta be a way to move. Oh, what does it say? I can't. Okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, so we get the word uh, Jew, uh, Ye Yehuda, from the word Yada, praise. So Jew is a person of praise or a praiser. The root of Yada is Yad or Yod, hand. So we can see that a Jew praises with his hands. He's raising his hands up to God. Okay. Um, Yod is the smallest letter and considered modest. We can also see uh, that the Yod below the Bob is a picture of the Jews or Israel through the wisdom of the Torah given by God. They now reach up to the Creator. We can also, we also saw earlier that the lower Yod is represents the presence of God on earth, the spirit, the Shekhinah. So I want you, hopefully these two images will stay with you, where you can see I made the Aleph on the left-hand bottom corner, where it's God's hand reaching down, like the hand, the Yod, and then the hand below the Vav, that hook um, that separates them, but it's connecting them actually. The bottom yod, the bottom hand, is reaching up to God. So there's our our olive, and um, we can see that um, yod or Yehuda, Yada, all of those words they they mean praise. So Jew is a person of praise, and that's why the hands are raised. But it's important because a Jew is a person of praise because they praise God through their acts of doing Judaism, of lifting up of God, of doing God's ways, of doing, of, of, of getting, we have the ability, we are given the ability to do Shabbat, to keep kosher, to do the festivals. So that's what makes us Jews. Okay. So up here at the top of the picture, the top picture shows the word Israel. Okay. And you see this person, we see this person climbing steps, but the steps aren't really steps. They're books. They're learning. The word Israel begins with a yod. Okay. The smallest letter in the alphabet, And it ends with a lamed, which means learned. Lamed is an acronym of lev, Mevin the at a heart that understands knowledge. The Lamed is the tallest letter in the Aleph Bet, and it represents royalty. As Israel 
We all start out small and we grow in Torah wisdom. And hopefully at the end, we end up with a Lamed, a heart that understands knowledge or Torah and the ways of God. And we truly become Israel, Israel. So we see that picture up there, which <laughs> I played around with, but it's this kid and he's small. And that's all of us. That's each and every one of us. We all start out small. We all start out as a Yod. Okay. And we start studying. We get this first book and it, it, we're opening up the pages and it's like, oh my God, I understand this. This is so cool. We go to the next step and we go to the next step. And little by little in our life, we're growing. And hopefully at the end, like I said, we're the Lamed, the learned, that we've actually gotten that that um, understanding of knowledge, the heart that understands knowledge. And that's what Israel is. That's what you as Israel are. So... I don't know how I'm going to do this because um, I don't know how to take off this top. Um, I can't read my. Thank you, Mijo. Okay. So there's a folk story about the, an ignorant um, shepherd boy that entered a synagogue eager to pray to God, but he didn't know how to pray. So the boy is downhearted because he doesn't know how to speak. Wait a minute. I don't know how to turn on my volume. He doesn't know how to speak to God. So the rabbi sees the boy and his sadness. Okay. And is moved by the, by the boy's pure and sincere desire. The rabbi sees the boy's plight and tells the boy to just recite the Aleph Bet. God will know the child's heart. And even though the boy is only reciting the Aleph Bet, God, in his great wisdom, will hear the boy's words. So this reminded me of Pesach, the child that doesn't know how to ask. Because remember, there's the four... The four um, I'm not hearing you. There are the four sons. Who's not hearing me? Somebody's not hearing me. Let me see. Can you hear me now? The story might need me of Pesach, the child that doesn't know how to ask. God knows our hearts. We need to learn Torah as much as we can now. I want you to feel the urgency of the times that we're in, but I do not want you to feel overwhelmed. God knows our hearts. We are all the Yod in Israel, growing, small but growing, and striving to reach the Laman, a heart that understands knowledge. So, you know, just, just take that first step. Take that first step of, you know, really studying on your own. And breaking down words and breaking down, you know, letters, study on your own so that you can see and, and like I said, become Israel, become the Jew that you're supposed to be. And then the little picture on the right shows, you know, a father teaching his, his son. <coughs> okay. So we know the Sh Shema, and it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Okay, so one, we saw, is equal to Aleph. It takes on a deeper meaning when we know that one is Aleph. Aleph is made up of, like I said, the two Yods and the Bab, which equals the 26, right? So, um, like I said, yod Hey Bav Hey is equal to 26 the name of god so now hopefully when you re when you do the shema and we say hear o israel the lord our god the lord is one the lord is one what is lord the lord is aleph 
but the Lord is yod hey vav hey. So hopefully that'll help you to um, see it in a deeper meaning, a deeper way. Mm, that's beautiful. Thank you. Okay. When we look at the olive, we see the two yuds. Now, this is something that I just thought was amazing. We look at the olive, we can see the two yuds as eyes, the two yuds as eyes. <laughs> Sorry, they always say yud as eyes, and the vav as a nose. Every human face has the letter olive right on it. Right in the very middle of our face, we have an olive. We're made in the image of God. Genesis 1, 27. In the image of God, God created them. We should be able to see the olive in the face of everyone we meet. We look for God or godly attributes in everyone's face. We remind ourselves that everyone's facial olive has the same numerical value. 26, as God's most awesome name, yod Hey vav Hey. We also know that there is a kind of divine light surrounding every person, the spark, back to the spark, the creation, the spark that God imparted on each of us to make us radiant or displaying a hint of his image. And I got to say, we don't always shine, but there are times that we speak and, oh my gosh, we shine. And somebody, you know, really gets it. And we get all excited because it's like, oh, they just they just showed me something so amazing. They shared something with me that that changed my life. So um, we're invited to always keep the image of God ever before our faces. But we cannot see God physically. Nobody can see God physically. So the Aleph by God's design, is literally on our faces because we're made in the image of God. Therefore, we see the, the name of God, yod heh vav -He, the Aleph, daily as we see the faces of those people God has placed in our path, engraved on every person's face like the Torah engraved on tablets of stone. So the bottom picture that I put there is just a bunch of people with their faces. I crammed them. It's like stretched out and crammed. So they kind of look like stones. <laughs> but um, I want you guys to remember that. That it's like, here's this nose. And there's the nose would be the bob. And then there's the olive, the two olives. So if you kind of tilt your head to the side, there's the olive, there's mm -hmm. the bob. And then there's the, there's the other olive. So every person you come, I mean, the yod, the bob, and then the other yod, I nose eye every person mm -hmm. you come in contact with every person you look in their face be the image of god because we don't see god face to face we're not seeing him physically but we need to be able to see god in those people that god has placed in our path mm -hmm. oh, was that the last one oh, I guess. oh that made me sad <laughs> okay so um let me see can you all see the faces uh everybody's faces no yes no can you hear me uh-huh yes yes okay so um i i um I just want to tell you, like, some of the places I go to to study. Um, when I study for anything, I go to Chabad, C-H-A-B-A-D dot org. That's one of the places I love to go study. So, and that's online. I like to go to Aish HaTorah. It's just Aish.com. Mm -hmm. A-I-S-H. Dot com. Then there's also Safaria, S E P H A R I A. It's S A F A R I A. It's S E. Anyway, Safaria. Um, 
and um, my Jewish learning. So there's like so many sites that I'm sure you all have have um, gone to, you know, um, that I may not know of, you know, and you can share those with me if you want. Um, but there's a lot of there's so many sites. Do you guys have any questions? Hmm. Eileen, can you hear me? This is Penny. Hi, Penny. Yes, I can Hi. hear you. Okay, I had a question. When you said that the Aleph Olive is silent, but then uh, you're pronouncing it. So, what is silent about it? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm saying I'm saying Olive because that's that's what the name that's the name of the letter. But like, if we look at Elohim, okay, uh, uh -huh. in in the can I go back? When we go when we go back to the word Elohim, we see that all we all, we're reading the vowel. Okay, we're not reading the the letter Aleph. Um, like oh, a okay, like, so like you're a saying bait, like a bait, you would have a b sound. Okay, uh, but that um that uh chart that I that chart. Can you guys see the chart? Yes. Okay. See, it's silent. We don't. Ha it doesn't have a sound of its own. It kind of, you know, just gets the sound of whatever the vowel is that is under it or next to it. Okay. So the e, so the e is silent. Is that what you're saying? What what e? No, like. I I don't, I'm really not understanding you. If you have the word, let's just say Elohim, okay? Okay. The olive doesn't have a sound. It's silent. What has the sound is the vowel underneath that goes E. Three dots. Okay, it's the three dots underneath. It goes E, okay? Um, my name in Hebrew is Ilana. It starts with an olive. And then it just has a dot at the bottom. Okay. So we don't say we, there's no sound to the olive, but there is a sound for the, um, the vowel, which is that dot and it's E. Okay. So there's no sound to olive. I'll okay. take your word for it. <laughs> Okay. but do you understand penny no but that's okay i'll i have to see it to understand yeah i'm gonna show her elohim okay on this page can you see this page penny where it says elohim it's on the fourth line yes okay so we start from right to left the very first right. word let me let me um get a pointer Wait a minute. Okay. So did I get the pointer? I don't think so. Got it. I think I got it there. So here we have the word bereshit. Okay. The second okay. word is bara. Okay. Okay. Then the third word is Elohim. Well, the, I'm covering the olive. Because Aleph doesn't have a sound. But okay. these letters down, these symbols down here, those are yes. the vowels. That's what we're hearing. Oh, okay. Because okay. what I was seeing, what I was seeing it was the letter without the dots. Okay. Yeah. So so those dots are the sound that we're making. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Anybody else? No. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That that's all I have for you today. I hope. Well, thank thank you, Eileen. And I like it because it's short and I can't remember it. I'm just yes. simple. So <laughs> I like. It. I like. I like it short too because then everybody can remember. Hopefully, and I'm putting a lot of pictures so that hopefully everybody remembers the pictures too. Right. It's easier. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night.
Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank Good night. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Eileen. Thanks, Eileen. Thank you. Shalom, shalom. And I'll send you those shalom. notes. Shalom. <laughs>